big thank you to the guys at We Are Stoke for sponsoring my match day vlogs this season. You can check them out on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, linked in the description. Hey up guys, RBSFC here and welcome to episode one of hopefully something that's going to be bring, brung to the channel um, and hopefully we'll be alongside running alongside the match day vlogs. Uh, but yeah, episode one today, a, a live show, it's not really a live show, it's pre-recorded but we're going to put it out as a live show. Um, for episode one today, we are joined by Bear Pits, Elliot Yates. Elliot, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you doing in these weird times? I'm not too bad, actually. Uh, I recorded my Q and A yesterday, um, so it's just nice to bring some. And it got pretty decent feedback, so um, I'm in yeah. a good mood. Yeah, that's good. Uh, same here. Um, despite the troubled circumstances, just trying to keep myself going without the football. It's proving very difficult. Yeah, um, to be fair, it's not been as bad as I thought it would be. Um, but I'm doing, like I say, we were we were supposed to play Birmingham on Monday. Um, yeah. It it does get a bit difficult on a match day, knowing you you know you should be with your mates watching Stoke. Um, yeah. But hopefully, everyone who's watching is staying safe and well. Um, the premise of this show is basically we're just going to talk about Stoke for forty minutes to an hour. Um, and just to get a bit of extra content and some I know I do a bit of a rundown for about a minute at the end of a match day vlog um but I don't feel like that's in depth enough so I'll be bringing on a guest uh, it might be Elliot it might be someone else every week and uh, we just talk about the game easy yeah um obviously there is no games to talk about so we'll just be doing a mini season review uh, I was going to do this as a video, but I feel like it's too long and I feel there's too much to talk about in a 15 minute video. So I thought I'd make it into a bit of a podcast type thing. Alright. So, we'll start off with pre-season. We were under Nathan Jones. Where yes. did you? What were you thinking going into the season? Well, I think the first thing I thought is that we were playing smaller teams around us. Like in, with the Hughes here, we were trying to play... Um, these teams from abroad and everything. We we kept it like really local. Other than that training camp, I think we went on in uh, Germany, was as it always seems to be with Stoke. We played Duisburg, um, but I think we just seemed to be playing like really small teams. We looked brilliant against the small teams, and um, we were trying new formations. I thought this is good. At least we're actually beating what's being played in front of us. As soon as we get to Leicester, and fair enough, Shawcross got injured and it was a horrible injury, and he's still recovering now, but. I think when we got to Leicester, I could see McLean was getting turned on the back foot all the time at left back. And I think, I'm, and I know it's like Leicester and it was a big club, but you could see the problems even then that McLean's not a left back. And the diamond, we were sort of getting exposed by it by um, the Premier League sides, but we weren't getting exposed by it by the League One sides and the League Two sides, which I think tells something about Nathan Jones's manager like style as in like he, the diamond work for him in league one and league two it goes to the championship it doesn't work and it will go to the and it goes to a premier league side and it doesn't work so i think it's more technical so pre-season was good but um just the system didn't really suit us i think i felt we were good in that leicester game um leicester mm -hmm. obviously have done really well this season you know they're in the top four of the premier league they probably will get champions league um and they've given Teams like Liverpool and Man City a good game in a couple of occasions this season, so it's not that bad of a, a loss, and we only lost 2-1, and had Ryan has stayed on, I reckon we could have got a draw from it. Yeah, I think so as well, but um, I think there's no shame in losing to Leicester, but I think Jones should have spotted the problems early on. McLean's getting turned on the back foot all the time. Like He's not a left back and he never will be a left back we need to play him in his natural position the same can be said for Ince as well we played Ince at Cam um, not in pre-season we played him at Cam sort of the start of the season and it just didn't work we just played everyone out of position and I think that was the main problem that's something I brought up in my O'Neill video at the end of January um, mm. and it was just he's gone back to basics and he's put We'll get onto O'Neill in a bit more depth later on. Yeah, but he's, everyone's in the natural position, and you can see the difference. Like McLean's been doing a lot better at wing, at left wing. You got Ince that's doing a lot better. At, Even um, Powell, yeah, out wide. You have got Powell, and recently in the last couple of weeks, he has been playing out wide due to the injuries. But he's been doing a job there. Um, but 
speaking of Powell, he was one of seven permanent signings we brought in. Seven permanent mm. signings? I can't count. Uh, four, sorry. No, 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 not four. Six. We announced five in one day, I think. We had, we had those five in one day, and Powell was part of them. Uh, we brought Davies in from Barnsley, Gregory in from Millwall, Powell from Burn, not Burnley. We brought <laughs> Powell good. in from Wigan, Lindsay in from Barnsley, Cousins in from QPR. They were all in one day. Lord. Yeah. When the signings were announced, I was fairly confident. Davies, when he came in, I think everyone expected Butland to be out the door. Um, mm. He had a good season in League One the season before. He's a good keeper. Uh, I haven't actually seen him too many times this season. I've seen him once in an under-23s game in the actual flesh. Um, but that's about it. Gregory... He's been all right. Just his end product probably could do with a bit more work. He's really, really hard working. Uh, been one of my yeah. favourite players this season. Powell, he's been really good the last couple of weeks, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been good under O'Neill, less so under Nathan Jones. I think the only thing he did for Nathan Jones was that goal against Leicester in pre-season. And I think he had a shot against Leeds. And that, that was it. So, yeah, he hadn't featured much, but... Um, Maybe it was just injury because I've heard like from other clubs that he's played for, he's quite injury prone. So I think that might have been it. But I think he's past that now and he's um, looking to kick on. So that's good. But the signings, with my opinions on them, was um, it's good that we're getting in these signings that aren't superstars. I mean, I know that may sound stupid to some people, but the superstars may think they're too good for Stoke. Like I'm not saying a phobie thought that or um, Ince thought that or anyone thought that in the Rowett era but you could see like we were buying these players for big money and they weren't performing so if we buy players for um cheaper amounts that saves us on the FFP as well but it also gives us like these good characters the lads that played in non-league and just love playing for the game rather than the money yeah we also bought in Lindsay for two million pounds I think he's been all yeah, right this yeah. season he's not done too bad I feel like he's been all right but I wouldn't say yeah, yeah. he should be starting every week. Um, Cousins had a really good run over Christmas. Um, I feel like he's a lot better at home than he is away. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, so as well. I think... Uh, what's it? Who else was there? Um, Smith. He bought Smith in for four million. He scored a really nice yeah, goal in pre-season against Tranmere. Yeah, I saw that. And he's um, been, he's been was... decent this season couple of times he does get dragged central I'm thinking of Derby you know where we conceded in the first couple of minutes yeah but I think that was the system rather than anything more than anything I think if you look at every goal that Nathan Jones concedes um, at Stoke it will always come from out wide and that's because we were just so exposed with no wingers you rely on your fullback so much to like get up and down get up and down and they can't get back in time or they can't get up in time so yeah, um, it happened the other week though with uh, Tommy Smith. He did get dragged central again, um, but I think that was just more complacency because we were falling up against Hull. Uh, and then we brought in Stephen Ward, a, a player I was quite confused with us bringing in. Uh, obviously, we had been, I think he was meant to be a backup left back, but yeah. Yeah. He, I think he'll be off in the summer anyway. He's not really played all that much, especially in the last couple no. of weeks because he's been injured. Then we brought in three loan signings who left in the January transfer window. Uh, Scott Hogan, Duffy and Carter Vickers. Yeah, I think they're all panic buys, to be honest, if, if I'm honest with you. I think Hogan I can understand a little bit because of the Brentford Hogan, which um, Birmingham have got out in him. But I just think we can't get... I mean, it was the same as Rowett and Jones. We couldn't get the best out of players, but O'Neill has done that. So I think it's just bad management more than anything with... All the with the players that we signed in those windows, Duffy I couldn't understand when we signed him, and I couldn't understand like when he left. I don't know why we bought him. Um, he scored some nice, he scored understand. some nice goals. Um, I'm looking at the like of the one against Sheffield Wednesday uh, for Sheffield United. Yeah. That was a nice goal, but didn't really mm. didn't really play all that much for us. Um, and I don't think he. Nah, we had three attacking midfielders it? in that Jones system. We had Powell. Ince and Duffy. Yeah. And if Verlinden came on, Verlinden would be 
in the middle at um, attacking midfield before he went on loan to Bolton. Yeah, I can understand that either. I don't know why we sent Valinda out on loan. Um, what was it with um, Duffy? I just couldn't understand it. We've already got the two attacking midfielders that we need in um, Ince and um, Powell. I just couldn't understand why we needed another one. Like it's not as if one gets injured and we don't have one left. We've still got Ince and we've still got Powell, but I just couldn't understand it. There's just too there were too many midfielders in there, and I just don't know why we needed another one. And then the season started. Uh, I'm not even going to mention Cameron Carter because he didn't do all too much, I don't think. No. Give away a penalty against West Brom. That was about it, yeah. really. Um, yeah. Opening day, QPR at home. I was extremely confident going into this one. I was yeah. I was predicting top six. <laughs> yeah. I predicted us to come fourth, and um, let's just say that's not worked out. Um but I predicted us to come fourth um, and didn't. Alarm bells weren't ringing. We could, we started off with some really good chances. I know Vokes had that chance um, early on. Um, and then Jack obviously makes a mistake 1 0. Eze mm. is, a, is probably he's one of the class. best. He's one of the best championship players. I don't care what anyone says. He's one of the best players in the division. Um, Nathan Collins did look a little bit raw, I do have to say. Um, and that was 2 0. Yeah. I think if um, Danny Bart scored at the end, I think it might have changed like everyone's perception of it. But I think oh, I didn't actually see most of the game because I was actually in, a, on a, in an airport in Greece at the time. And as soon as kickoff went off, we were taking off on uh, going back to uh, the UK. But um, I just I looked at my phone at the. Um, at, because we were playing and when we landed, I looked at my phone and we were like, like Dad, it's 2-0 to QPR. He's like, oh no, what's going on? And I just, we can understand it with what Jones had been promising us and everything. But I just, mm, I thought it was one of those games where I was like, okay, it's not as meant to go. Take it on the chin. We'll come back like next week. And um, just didn't. It's one of those things. I just don't know where it's come from. And... I'm, trying, I'm not really making much sense here, but um, I just don't know what went wrong. As in, like pre season was great, like Leicester was a blip, um, then we've just lost one nil, and I realised it was like the diamond. As soon as like you see it live, you can see like how how big an impact it has on the fullbacks, and I think that's what they were trying to do. Always target McLean, obviously. We changed to I think it was a four four two in about the sixtieth minute, and it did look a lot better going forward. And I think you can just yeah. tell there. There's enough players there that you can play wingers. I know we had a phobe out on the right, but I think he might have come off for Ince or yeah. Campbell. I, I can't, can't quite remember. But um, that I think that's when we scored, when we changed to the 4-4-2 four, four, and then obviously Bat had that chance at the end. Um, yeah. I, was, I came away a bit disappointed, but seeing that 4-4-2 four, four, at the end, I feel like that plan B worked and that's something I wanted yeah. to see us take into the... Charlton game the next week. Yeah. Another game that was not part of the script. No. Butland had two hours in two weeks. I felt a bit sorry for him. But I think it's the same there. I think it was just low confidence from Jack. I think he got left out of the England squad as well. Like a couple of weeks before. And it really hit him hard. We started off that game really well. We, we started on the front foot again. Um, and we were... I think we went into the first. It went into the second half. No. Yeah. I think we played we, really well. We, we, game, we, we, so, uh... we were decent. We were decent. Um, it was just unfortunately individual mistakes again. I think that's something that cost Nathan Jones a little bit. Mm, yeah, I think. I mean, that goal from the corner was just woeful from everyone. Like defending. Then the following Tuesday, I think it was, we got a one 0 win at Wigan away in the cup. Again, created some really good chances, but we only won 1-0. Yeah. And the, the, um, cut, the cutting edge um, that night wasn't great. Um, I know Vokes had quite a few chances, didn't put them away. Yeah. Um, who else was there? Uh, did Vokes score that, or did they give it to Collins? I personally gave it to Collins. Yeah. Because it came so off well. him, it was going on target. Yeah, I think I think Collins deserves that as well. But um, I think 
that game was sort of like, oh, it's just a cup game. We both put like our two sorts of sides out. I mean, not like I don't care about the cup. If Stoke do well in the cup, I'm happy for them. But you can never tell in the first round, can you? No, so, the first round's always... That one was good. Yeah. What was promising from that game was um, Collins being made captain. That was a real statement of intent as like where this kid's going to go in the future. And I personally think he's going to have a fantastic future in football. Maybe not with Stoke, but uh, with another club or he develops at Stoke and then goes somewhere else. He's, I think he's I think he's brilliant. And I think that showing him that he's being captain, I think he's now the youngest ever captain for us. Yeah, yes. And it's just fantastic. We're having Nathan Collins on the side. So that was the one sort of positive thing I took from that is that Collins is captain. But that's brilliant. And then we played uh, Derby, wasn't it, next week? Yes. 2-2 two, two draw. Good, good game. Um, Gregory and Hogan linked up really, really well. Um, I thought they, them two were really good go, going forward together. I think you mentioned they were playing together at Halifax. Yes, yes, that's right. Which, which was something I didn't understand. Uh, obviously, we played the two up front, and I feel like Gregory and Hogan linked up extremely well. Um I wanted to see them together up front a lot more because, you know, they just work together. Gregory holds it up. Hogan makes the running behind. It's how them two play. Um, yeah. And I feel like Jones was just going for Vokes and Afobe where he could and playing the wrong players mm. with each other. It didn't quite work. Um, no. Preston, we played Preston in midweek. That was just awful. Jack Butler got mad at the match for Preston. At this point, he was probably really low on confidence. Um, I feel like we did get a bit unlucky, though. Yeah, definitely. I think with this, just the story of Nathan Jones, he got really unlucky. But I think the one thing with Nathan Jones, I just couldn't understand why he's not changing the system from a diamond. It's clearly not working. Uh, so... Well, I mean, it was we played really well, but I mean, like, as in, it's not getting results. Then we played Leeds on the Saturday. Um, yeah, that was lost. Him. I think we made like, I want to say we made nine changes. That game. I wasn't at that game, so I wouldn't know. I think but, we um... made nine changes that game. Federici had a really good game in goal. Uh, and then we, mm, yes. obviously if you look at the score and he's conceded three uh, but if you actually watch his highlights through I know he put something on Instagram the other day and the amount of saves he yeah, made in that lead it. game and it kept the score um, and I know a few Leeds fans uh, left it in the comments of the vlog um, that Federici kept the score down yeah I think so as well I think Federici is a really good backup goalkeeper which um, which is good for us I think he'll be off in the summer unfortunately but he it's not like he's going to go off in like hatred or anything, but it's been all right for us. But um, yeah, me too. I want to, I want to see, um, I want to see him leave and then see Bursic come through though. That's what I want to happen because Federici is getting on a bit. Yeah, I feel like Bursic going going forward, um, Bursic's going to be a lot more worthwhile having round at the club. Yeah, I think Bursic, Davis, and um, Butland should be the three next year personally. Then we beat Leeds in the Cup on the Tuesday, I think. Um, yeah, surprisingly on penalties. We were 2 0 up against Leeds at Allen Road. You'd think yeah. something's, something's clicked, but obviously then we threw it away, managed to win it on penalties, um, and we were through into the next round. It, yes, we, were, we, were. We, were, we went into Birmingham away in, in high spirits. Yes, yes, definitely. I, we could see, like, as in, I think we changed the system that game to a four-three-three. Like, Ince was playing out wide. I remember. Yeah, I know we, I know we had the five at the back kind of formation. Mm. You know where we had the Woods. We had Woods kind of sat in front of the the two centre backs. No, Woods wasn't playing that game. I don't remember that because I met him at the game. Going away. No, what about Leeds? Oh, Leeds. Oh, so we had the five at the back <laughs> and Woods just dropped back and sat in between the two centre-backs. I think that worked a lot better. Uh, yeah, I think that might have worked a lot better as well. I mean, I wasn't even watching the game. But, but after we beat Leeds, I was quite confident going into Birmingham. Yeah. We started quite well. We were putting some good chances. 
we we had some really good chances. Uh, Birmingham had their share of chances. They weren't as good as ours. Going into half time, nil nil. I can remember um, you were there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my first away that year. We we were talking at half time, and we both said we can, you know, we can get a result out of this. You know, it might be the might be the kickstart. You know, we might have had a couple of bad games, but I feel like today's the day we can get something. Just yeah, after half time, I like that as well. Just after half time, Alan has another very very poor miss. Yeah, yeah, he had a few of them. Gregory should have done a little bit better, I think. Um, but I think Alan, yeah. instead of taking that touch, which he did. I think he maybe should have hit it first time. Yeah, you could probably agree with that. I think I, I can tell what he's doing, but he's just there's just no luck for us in the end. Like he had that chance against Derby as well, didn't he? Yeah, I know it's easy for us to say, but you know if we if we were brought in that situation, I think uh, we wouldn't do as good of a job. I think. Well, I know my shot would end mm. up over the uh, south stand. Um, so, yeah. We took the lead through Lindsay in, I think, a 54th minute. Um, oh, a really nice enough. ball across from Smith. And we were good. We were good at the start of that second half. But then a couple of minutes after um, Birmingham floated that ball in, Djukovic at the back stick, we didn't defend that well enough. No, definitely not. You know, Djukovic we just um, plays very... He, he likes to get a back stick at it, and we didn't defend it well like enough. Like Crouch, doesn't he? Like Crouch, like yeah. He? Um, we didn't defend it well enough. Uh, so that's 1 1, and then obviously Bellingham scored. Really, really unlucky goal, I think. But I think we deserved a draw at least. Uh, the we deflection. deserved a draw from that, yeah. The deflection off Lindsay was cruel. Yeah, I know. It was... It's just one of those. We went 1 0 up, we thought, brilliant, this is great. And then the first chance comes in and then concedes straight away and just goes from really great to like straight back down again. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's just been the same story in that sort of um, first few games under Nathan Jones. I mean, people were still applauding him, which was brilliant from the fans' point of view. I mean, we, I was still sort of with him at that point. I know there's a few people around me um, that were becoming quite disgruntled with it. Um, yeah, and if you watch the vlog back, um, Jones does come up to the way, and then there is a few fans starting to turn. Yeah, I know. I saw that as well. I mean, they just want results at the end of the day. I mean, we were playing all right, but we just weren't getting results. But we, what was interesting that day is I said we changed the four three three, and I think that worked really well. Yeah, but, I think but, it did work a bit better. But I feel that was the one game. Yeah. I said that was the one game where I thought, <laughs> go on, mate, go on. I feel like if it didn't work first time, I feel like Jones was very quick to change it back to the diamond. Yeah, I know. He loved his diamond. So. I mean, if it worked, things... if the diamond worked, he's worked it at other clubs. So, you know, it obviously does work. I know Leicester play with a diamond. Um, I know they mm. play with wingers instead of two narrow um, mid like midfielder kind of things. They they play the wide diamond with wingers um, and it works for them but I feel like you've got to have the players yeah. that can play the system yeah I know um, I think with uh, the diamond as well I think there was um, that Birmingham was the one game I thought um, like finally he's changed the system this is brilliant let's see how we play we played really well and I thought this is great like this is going to be the new, this is going to be where we're going with and then we lose that game and then I think who did we play that game um we go to the next game. We just stopped yeah, it again, City. didn't we? Yeah, it was Bristol, wasn't it? I think that um, game. We played the diamond again. Yeah, the, we started off really well again. Uh, I think it was Klukas that got the goal. Uh, a really nice yeah. finish. And then a couple of minutes later, the do was brilliant. A couple of minutes later, Allen gets sent off, and I think I just really spoiled the game. I yeah. don't think it was a red. He shouldn't have been sent off. I don't think it was a red. No, I think it should have been a yellow card. The ref was very harsh. Um, yeah. But we held the lead into half-time 1-0. Um, and then I think it was Jeju that got the goal. Again, very similar to Zhukovic. Yeah. yeah. Um, let, right, rose like a salmon and uh, nodded it in at it's the back the stick. Problem. Yeah, it's the same problem. It's just crossing into the box. And that's from like 
the well, wing. We, from we, the left side again. Defend, yeah, we couldn't defend the back post anyway, but I mean, like, when we revert back to the diamond, it's got bigger risk then, hasn't it? Yeah, and then obviously, everyone's favourite goal, everyone's favourite moment of RBSFC in the season, the goal and technology moment. Yeah. Yeah. I personally didn't think it was in. Um, I thought Edwards had cleared it off the line. I didn't look at the ref. So that's why I thought it wasn't in. And I saw the ball come out. Because I thought it went on my side of the post. I, I saw it went past the post, but I thought it was on out of the box. like. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously I saw the ref and I just thought, brilliant. Um, but we didn't. I feel like we deserved something a bit better from that game as well. I know it's easy to say. Um, then we played Brentford the next week. Could have won it. Could have lost it. It was the first uh, draw. Of the, no, it was the second point of the season, wasn't it? Yeah, second point of the season. That was a nil-nil. I think it was. I think that was a game was a complete write-off. I don't think anyone played well. That's about a good chance. He probably should have put it away. I think he tried to go around the keeper instead. Of, he should have just slotted it away. Um Crawley, we are going to skip over. Um, that was just a complete yeah. disaster. Um, and then we played Forest on the Friday. Again, started off oh, well. No, scored no. first. We scored first. And then a, a Butler mistake just before half time. Um, Equalises it. And then obviously it's... Um, and then it finished 3-2. McLean getting a goal late on. Yeah. I personally think Jones should have been sat then. It's just, it was clearly evident that it's not working. So you just need to sort of like change it up as quick as you can so you can get out of a mess you can. But the, we have good owners and um, they stuck with it. So, you know, they, that was, that's what they were doing. I personally think he should have got sat at the uh, Forest one. And I thought he definitely should have got sat after the Huddersfield one. And then I thought, OK, if he loses to Swansea, then he's definitely going. And then we won. But it was, but we the luck went for us this time. I think uh, as well with the um, the Huddersfield game, we were we were decent. Um, but it, again, yeah. it was a ball coming down from the left hand side. Uh, I think that's yeah. if you look at especially a couple of Nathan Jones highlights, it, that left hand side was very weak, and Stoke yeah, yeah. needed Stoke have needed a left back for absolutely ages. We've needed a left back since Eric Peters. Down the left, uh, down the right hand side, we were all right. Um, through the middle we were alright but it's just that left hand side I think McLean he's not a defender no definitely not I'd, have, I'd be intrigued to see McLean at left wing back I wouldn't be intrigued to see him at left back I mean cause left wing back because he's a hard worker and he gets back and so that sort of combines them both but I wouldn't want to see him primarily as a left back where that's primarily defending yeah uh, and then Swansea the first one of the season, a glimmer yes, of hope, fine. a glimmer of hope, yeah. you know, something might be working now, something, he might, something might have clicked, I and then that. we defended we for our lives that game, we, we? Were, we were really good, Hogan, with the last, pretty much the last kick of the game, um, and then Fulham the next week, back to back wins, yes. Yes. Gregory and Hogan linking up, looks brilliant, doesn't it? And we finally think the diamond's going to work. Two wins against some really strong championship sides. You're thinking coming away from that Holland, the coming away from that Fulham game. You're thinking, you know, we 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 have a chance. Yeah, Going yeah, into yeah, Sheffield yeah. Wednesday on the uh, Tuesday, I was confident, uh, mm -hmm. but Lindsay mistake. Um, nothing Federici could have done. Uh, again, another individual error costing us. And we had two injuries, didn't we? Edwards went off and we couldn't make a sub. Yeah, I think we had, that was just... I think the same again, it was just unlucky for us, but you keep saying that. But there's a reason that something's unlucky, like luck's not going for you. And it could be like the diamond formation or it could be anything else. But the diamond was working at some stages, but we looked very, very vulnerable like in both of those games. You see the Swansea match, we were defending for our lives. We did really well defensively. But that poses a Fulham threat was, as well. Fulham you aren't were good on the defensively. Ball. I felt uh, Federici I felt that was, dealt that was with one Mitrovic. Chance, wasn't there? Federici dealt with Mitrovic a lot, uh, a lot better. Yeah, I think there was one chance, wasn't there, where the ball went in 
and everyone in the booth and I'm like, oh, oh my God, like, where's this going? And it just went out in the end. But that was, that I could see it was pretty weak at that point with the diamond formation. We, it poses a vulnerable, vulnerable threat down that right hand, down that right hand side of the opposite team and down our left hand side. Yeah, and then we played Millwall that following Saturday. Obviously, Rowett, it was, it, it was his first game as Millwall manager. Uh, and that put the final uh, nail in the Nathan Jones era coffin. Um, Jones yeah. was sacked the next week. And you're thinking, we're in the bottom two. I think Huddersfield had just got a result as well. Huddersfield beat us, didn't they? So We've got eight points. I wasn't confident. We I know we were going for uh, managers like Alex Neal. Um, yeah. What I don't think you can jump on that championship merry-go-round. You can't. That's this is what I thought at the time. You can't jump on that championship merry-go-round. Yeah. You have to, you know, think outside the box a bit. And I think that's what we've done well with <laughs> with O'Neill. We're going to come on to O'Neill now. Um, but I think the Nathan Jones era just look wasn't on his side. I think no, that's the, the that's the conclusion we can bring. Yeah, he promised us like a load of things, but he just I don't think he was the manager the manager to deliver right. in the championship. But yeah, going into that uh, Barnsley game, we're gonna completely skip over West Brom. You're playing against yeah. I think they were the league leaders at the time. And yeah. Yeah. you're playing with them in with interim staff, you're always gonna struggle. And I do feel quite sorry for the lap how he was chucked in at the deep end a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Delap's the sort of person to take it, though. Yeah, Delap, fair play to him. Um, I feel like it could have been a lot worse, but we didn't play the diamond that game, did we? I feel I think we played a 4 3 No, we didn't play the diamond. We played Carter Vickers at right back, which I still wasn't. Uh, was that the game we played the four centre halves? No, that was last season, Middlesbrough, wasn't it? Middlesbrough last season as well, oh, yeah, played it was, four centre it? halves. Um, yeah. But. Going into Barnsley, I was very mixed. I didn't think... I thought we might be able to get something, but I don't. I did not see that 4-2 coming at all. It was the first time we scored three no, goals no, since... I mean it was the first time we scored three goals since 2017. And mm. we were we were really good. Uh, everyone looked really comfortable playing in, the, uh, playing in their preferred position, which I think is very important. Yeah, exactly. I think with a manager, you need to get... You need to get it. We had to get it right this time. It was fair. We had to get it right. I mean, we didn't get it right the previous two times under Rabbit and Jones. But I think what I was thinking there is, OK, we've tried the proven one in the championship with Rowett. That hasn't worked. We've tried the unproven one with Jones. That hasn't worked. We're going to try the one who's proved it in international football, but hasn't actually but it's proved it somewhere else. But hasn't actually proved it in the championship. So let's let's try that. And it's worked, and it's worked for us. O'Neill's done really well. Um, he's completely turned the Northern Irish national team around. I think we were 128th um, in yeah. the world yeah. rankings, and now the 20th or something. Doing that, yeah, he yeah, got them, Doing that, he got them to the uh, round of 16 stages of the Euros, which I think Euros, any Northern yeah. Irish person was not expecting going into that tournament. No, I think the one thing that stood out for him was. Um, I'll just say this and you can go on to your point, but one thing stuck for me was that someone said, oh, well, he hasn't done it in club football. He's only just done the Irish teams. But look up the teams he's managed in Ireland. And um, is it Shamrock Rovers he managed? Where, yes. Them to their first uh, league To the title, Europa League. I think. It was the first league title and he was the first manager to take a an Irish league team to the uh, knockout state, uh, the, uh, the, the proper like Euro, Europa, Europa League. Europa league. Uh, yeah. group stages um, so he's already rebuilt two sides and I think he's done a club before that as well I can't remember what he did mm. off the top of my head but but he's proven in like to take sides forward so surely he'd be able to take this side forward exactly and them two them first two games well every game we've played really I, I, I can't I reckon the only game I'm looking at the games now and the only game we've been really poor in I'd probably say Derby but we still created a few or good... Borough, yeah. Or Borough, again, we created some good chances. The ref wasn't on our side in that Borough game. Uh, we pro I think that Klukas uh, penalty shout should have been given. Yeah. And you're looking at a whole different game then. And we're going, we'll are going. we zip through the, the fixtures quickly. Wigan, last-minute winner. You're thinking, hey, we've got a chance now. Yeah, we are. 
Cardiff, we lost. We created some good chances, just like that bit of cutting edge. I know you were there. Yeah, there's, um, we, we did okay. We just didn't really have that cutting edge, like you said. I think there was um, chances that could have gone for us. Um, they scored and basically just sat back for the whole thing. That's the that's the story. Yeah, I know, it was, I know it was fairly early, the goal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite early. I don't know what minute it was in, but um, it was quite early. Bakuna was the one who scored it. And um, we we actually did okay, because under Joe's, we would have gone 1-0 down and thought, oh, no, here we go. But we actually look, we were actually looking all right. Yeah. Um, then we played Blackburn, a good side. They're a good side. Yeah, um, not a good side, side. but... Hull, we then it's lost. Hull, it, I don't think. We then lost the whole uh, game the following week. Um, Bowen, one of the was one of the best players in the championship before he moved to um, West Ham. West Ham, yeah. Um, then we won at Luton. A good game. We played really well. I thought Luton were really poor. Uh, definitely one of the worst sides that has been down the Bet Three Six Five this season. Yeah, definitely. The following Saturday, we drew. 0-0 to Reading we always seem to draw against Reading it's, and it's normally a really boring game yeah just I think that was a complete write-off if I'm, I think that was a complete write-off if I'm honest I don't think like I said we always seem to draw draw to Reading I don't know what it is but it's either a 0-0 draw or an exciting draw it's nothing in between uh, uh, and then obviously we lost to Middlesbrough I was really panicking after Middlesbrough me too. Me too. Yeah. I yeah. I was very very worried for what would happen, um, and then obviously the Sheffield Wednesday game comes around. Oh, that's the one of the oh, best experiences. Best well, best it's ever definitely one of my best game, the best games of the season. Um, it, now it, I think it was ninety minutes. I said in the vlog, I said we're not getting anything out of this. Yeah, I kept yeah. looking at the clock as if to say like, is it? There's, I don't think there's enough time. Like in my head, I was thinking that. And then Campbell scored, and I was like, "Like we could do this." I mean, the what? I think the draw was well. If you look at how far Sheffield Wednesday have fallen, I think that was one of. The, I think that was the start of them kind of falling off, um, because yeah. we can we can finish above Sheffield Wednesday. It's uh, crazy how the league works, but um, I think they were third place at the time. Um, and Campbell obviously got the volley really, really well taken finish. And yeah, you're looking at the clock. And I think I, yeah. I, I can't. I think it was either McLean or Barr that run over to him. Because Campbell was yeah, celebrating, I and I know McLean or Barr ran over to him that, and yeah. patted him on the back and it said, "We'll go Shawcroft. again." Cross, yeah, it was. Um, it was Shawcross. What? Well, uh, that's that's what made me think like we can do this now because uh, when Shawcross um, went over to the lad, like, because then they were celebrating, Barr. Kluka, no, not Kluka, um, McLean and Campbell were all celebrating, and Shawcross was the one like pushing them away and saying, like, Come on, get back, we can get another. And then they all went to each other and just went, Oh, yeah, we can get another, come on, let's do this. So that's when I thought, like, we could actually do this. And then as soon as we scored that, I thought, like, Okay, we're going to be fine. O'Neill, Rowett era, gone. We've got, we've got the man now. Yeah, I think we, I know we pl played it back to Butland or Smith. And I felt the whistle was going to go. And obviously my vlogs, I filmed the final whistle. I turned my yeah. phone around to film the final whistle. Yeah. And then the ball just keeps launching up. McLean wins it and it goes out for a corner. And I'm like, yeah. you know what's coming. I was half expecting Jack to get up. Um, but I feel like every point in this position we were in at the time is vital. And we were very... We were lucky the way it, just how it fell to Vokes' feet. Yeah. And Vokes, a striker like that, any striker is going to nod that in, it, prod it in. And, uh, well, let the carnage amen, uh, let, let the carnage show itself. And I think there's a lot of videos going around of that uh, last minute winner, and there's some really good ones. That's the best sort of limbs I've had because I was in the boozing end at that time and I've only really started going into the boozing end this season for some games and it's just incredible. Like you're hugging, you're grabbing him, you're hugging if you don't even know it's... Oh, mate, it was brilliant. It was probably the best home limbs I've had.
Yeah, it was, it, I think it so. was probably either that or the Butland penalty save against Hazard. Yeah, I've got I've got goosebumps now, guys. So um. <laughs> it was it was it was just really good, and uh, I think that's my game of the season. For the final game of the final game of a very disappointing two thousand and nineteen, uh, we lost to Fulham. They're a good side. I feel like we yeah. were hard done to in the goal. I felt sorry for Shawcross though because he hasn't really come back since that match. He got he got injured that game, didn't he? Yeah. And yeah. I feel like we were we were unlucky because I did feel like that goal was a little bit offside. I didn't see the goal. I don't think I've seen the goal actually. Uh, I think yeah. it was just a little bit offside. Uh, but then we go into the new year, Huddersfield away. We go yeah. one nil up through Vokes. You're thinking, okay, yeah, okay. Then we go, then we uh, go two one down, and you're thinking, oh god, here we go again. You know, it's complete. Yes, the, the the with the I think it was one of their goals. It wasn't a free kick in the first place, and it was just a mix up between Bart yeah. and Butland at the back. Uh, then Powell gets that goal um, to equalise. Very fairly quick reply, yeah. and then Campbell um, get that re gets that really nice uh, dip uh, dip in volley. And then, um, then he got that other really nice finish around the keeper that makes it four two, and then Gregory finishes it off five. Yeah, it re I think it was positive to take from that performance. Uh, we bounced back from a losing position. Yeah, that's that was the main thing that I thought because, um, like I said, under Jones, the, you just give up at that point with the players would, and now you're actually fighting back. It's brilliant to see. I mean, Campbell playing on the wing was interesting because I thought. Well, he could probably play there, but he's not playing this position. But he showed, like, I think that was mainly for Ince, because Ince has done all right since then now, which is not often I say that about him. No, um, it, it was everyone was really good that game, a really positive start to the new decade. And, and then we played Brentford in the Cup. Yeah. Only yeah, even say. Only right even said in his pre, uh, post Huddersfield press conference, he wasn't really interested in the cup he give it he gives some of the fringe yeah. players a run out uh i felt like a couple of players did all right uh impressed yeah, Villa... did all right Valinden did okay Valinden came right. that was their first game this season uh Valinden was really positive um uh i think Nguy was really unlucky with that chance towards the end where he slipped yeah i think so as well Valinden was unlucky where it just went where it went over the bar quite a bit but the Linden creates some really good chances and Goy put some good deliveries into the box. Um I didn't I wasn't really fussed about that game. Obviously I want Stoke to win every game, but for the off chance we'd get someone yeah. like Liverpool or City away. But then we'd yeah, be playing we'd be playing Accrington Stanley because we've been too um focused on the cup. Um then we played Millwall the next week. Broward. Gonna yeah. be boring. Uh, and it was out, yeah. Then we beat West Brom away. A really, really good piece of play in the lead up to goal. That, a really nice ball put through from Powell. Uh, finds Ince. Ince, um, credit to him, I thought, um, when he had the ball nicked off him. Uh, I think, was it Hal Ghazi that was uh, marking him? I felt when he won the ball, um, Ince was just going to give up. But he kept at it. Puts that really nice ball into Campbell. And, uh, well, that was just brilliant. Yeah. Work great, something I've been really impressed with since O'Neill's come in. Yeah, he's been a lot better, hasn't he? Yeah, evidently, I think. What he's done under Michael O'Neill has been brilliant for me. Cause, uh, he's even got himself a goal. Yes, exactly. But um, what's, what I was saying is, um, I think I spoke to this guy on Twitter the other day, and he said he's a Derby fan. He just went, what's gone wrong with Ince? And I was just went, well, what I think is that Rowett probably relied on him too much. That put a lot of pressure on him. And Joan, Nathan Jones played him out of position. And now we've got O'Neill, who, one, plays him in his position, doesn't give him too much responsibility other than what a right winger should do. And he's he's performing, he's working hard, which is brilliant to see. I remember the Blackburn game, he didn't work hard at all. He wasn't getting in the way of like challenges. He wasn't getting into challenges. He was bottling out of them. I thought, oh my God, like what what is he doing here? And now he's been... Like, I think that was the thing we needed with Campbell going in the side at right wing. I think that gave him the sort of, yeah, I'm no one safe in this side. A kid can get in ahead of me. So uh... Exactly. I mean, that West Brom game, I felt like we were unlucky. I think it was Gregory that added a chance in the second half. Probably should have done a little bit better to put it away. 
Um, but defensively that night, uh, credit absolute credit to Smith, Bart, Lindsay, yeah. Martin, Zindy, and Jack. I'm not going to take any credit away from Jack because you know right at the end where he fumbled the ball. Uh, I can't remember who he yeah. pushed past. He pushed past two of our players and maybe a West Brom player as well. And literally, yeah, he that. dropped the ball. The ball's probably six feet in front of him. But he made sure yeah. he got that ball and it won us the game. Um, I him did not. Danny Bart are excellent. I didn't stop watching the uh, stopwatch. Didn't stop watching it in, all through that second half. So I can't really recall anything from the second half. Um, then we played Swansea the next week. Yeah. Klukas and McLean, yeah. two really nice finishes. Uh, Klukas giving it full beans to the uh, away fans, which was uh, really, really funny. Yeah, it was that was funny. We've scored a lot of like last minute goals as well, which I think is quite good. We've had a lot of moments this season. This we, season that have been brilliant. Even despite like an awful position in the league, we've still had a good season. Yeah, uh, Derby, absolute write off. Dreadful, yeah, right dreadful off. game. Um, I was speaking to my mate Stad, who I went with. And he said, um, you, you don't stop Rooney, you don't stop Derby. And it's true. And we didn't yeah, stop Rooney. Exactly. We didn't stop Rooney, so we didn't stop Derby. Um, you know, Derby were in some decent form at that point, so but so were we. Um, we bounced back against Charlton. Really, yes, yes, we did. really, really good win. Uh, really impressed. Uh, Int got a goal. Um, then Preston, um, that following Wednesday... Preston, not the biggest fan of Preston. No, me neither. Um, Obviously, McLean and Valinden uh, suffered injuries, which left us. They, they went out and just. Ba- I think this will happen. They went out and basically just said like, rough them up, see what you can get. But they took that as let's kick them in the legs and everything, which you can, roughing them up is good. Like we do that, but I mean we don't actually go out to try and tend to kick people. That's what Arsenal fans thought we did with the whole Ramsey incident and. We're not that sort of club, and we know we aren't that sort of club. I felt as well um, that left us very um, exposed at points. I know Thompson uh, played out on that uh, left hand side; didn't really work for me. No, he's not, not really a winger. winger. I, I think, think I would have preferred think... Ngoy out there because Ngoy's done all right in the cup and everything. But QPR, uh, really good. Um, not re- not very good at all. Uh, <laughs> no, a really good start. Sorry, uh, we went two 0 up, and you're thinking, you know. We're onto something here, and then uh, QPR just completely finishes off. Um, we couldn't mm-hmm. hold the lead, which is really disappointing. Uh, Cardiff the next week. Uh, this is the game where the club put the ticket offer on, wasn't it? Oh yeah, they did. I forgot about that. I had an interview. With, I had an interview at uni, so uh, I'm not going to say which uni it is. Either. I'm going to say the club need to do this more often because I felt the 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 um the more. Um, People the, no, the up, less the less red seats you can see, I think the boost the yeah. players, and I think that's something one of the reasons why we did end up getting a good result that game. Um, so again, really good game. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, what's I was going to say? I don't want it to be like as in you can't actually get tickets because they're sold out every week. I mean, I'd rather a sell out every week, but it'd be easy for me to get tickets as a member. Like, I wouldn't want it to be like me turn up at the ground because some people are going to be turning up the ground and say no you can't get in so it works both ways I think Blackburn on the Wednesday night yeah I it felt we'd shut been out yeah we were we weren't great were we we were, we were all right we created some all right chances but yeah it was a bit bit boring um Luton yeah we, we started um, really well uh goal through Vokes um we um, but you know we held it out until the 80th minute, but then we just decided to start time wasting. We've never done that before. Yeah, I've never seen us time waste before, and it really did bite us in the backside. Um, a really silly tackle from Chester. Yeah, it wasn't really People necessary. Against... Yeah. He was run the. I think it was um, the the Luton player he tackled was actually running away from the goal. It wasn't really near the goal. I think he was a bit theatrical, personally, but he did actually catch him. Not if you if he did not put the tackle in. I know it's easy to say, but um, I think we could have won that game. And I do feel like the Luton player was looking for it a little bit as well. Um, I know I was watching Sam Clam's vlog. You know Sam. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah that was Sam. Um, I was watching his vlog, and it, it's really good angle, and you could see Chester does put the foot in, but the the Luton player did go looking for it, and he did kind of exaggerate it and did did that yeah. a little bit. Um, but yeah, Butland doesn't really save penalties, so as soon as as nah. soon as that happened, nah. I knew we we um we concede. We concede, yeah. Um, then Hull, really good game. The last game, well, it could be our last game of the season. Um, yeah. But oh, a really good game. We we, we we were ruthless going up front. We were absolutely amazing. Uh, probably the best yeah. I've seen as attack uh, in a long, long time. Uh, Klukas getting a brace. Powell getting a brace. Uh, nice to see uh, Campbell getting a goal. It's nice to see Campbell on penalties, I think, as well, because he needs to get his goal record up. That was a really, really solid penalty from Campbell. Yeah, I think so as well. There was a, you know, the thing is with strikers, like I, ju I always think the forwards should take penalties, personally, in my, my view. Because if you want to be like your top goal scorer this season, like penalties can add at least five more to your goal tally. Or, yeah, exactly. Campbell, um, he, he, everyone was really good that game. Um, and obviously we haven't had the best penalty record recently. It's just nice to see the putting away no. penalties. Yeah, yeah, we've put brilliant. so yeah. many penalties away this season. You're looking at um, Gregory versus uh, Darb, no, not Derby. Um, Gregory versus Fulham. Gregory versus Barnsley. You got um, who else put penalties away? Well, with the shootout was quite good as well. The Leeds one. The Leeds shootout, we were very good. Um, not so much in the Crawley one, uh, but we've had no. put a few penalties away this season, which is good to see. Uh, I'm hoping that um, penalty record is a thing of the past. Moving yeah, on, I now, hope so as well. Moving on, the season I'd probably give it a six out of ten. Yeah, I'd give it six point five. Maybe we've had some really positive moments. We've had some, we've had some, we've had some really really good moments. Um, we have been poor at times, but I think every team has that um, kind of season. Um, I would like to see us maybe push on get top half next season. Yeah, I'd hope I'd I'd hope to see us get at least top half next season. I just um. Playoffs, I don't think people should be talking about promotion unless like we're in the season and we've kicked a ball. So um, I'm not going too much I'm, pressure. I'm not going go and predict top six. I'd probably I'd take tenth. No. I'd take tenth. Yeah, me too. Um I'll take tenth. Maybe pushing playoffs. I wouldn't mind last day of the season, you know, we've still got a chance to get in the playoffs, but I'm not gonna get my hopes up too much because it this kind of happened with Nathan Jones last season. We were quite bright in some games, you know, we beat Leeds, we beat Blackburn. We played well, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Last season, I can sort of like forgive Nathan Jones for um, like uh, losing an extraordinary amount of games. Towards the end of last season, he was playing a four-three-three. Yeah, no. The thing is, what I found with Nathan Jones is that um, it was sort of like a pre-season for the pre-season. That makes sense because we we're playing Collins. We were playing Collins. We we're playing the younger lads. I was like, this is good. Get them experience because we're not going to go down. We're not going to get relegated. We're not going to get relegated. We're not going to go up. So we may as well just coast it to the rest of the season. Just play like a pre-season for the whole thing. I know Timon had a few runouts as well. Yeah, but did he have a few runouts? Uh, Preston. I thought he was on loan. Preston last year. Oh, Preston. oh no, Preston. Yeah, of course he did. Um, I mean, even last, Sorensen was playing a little bit as yes, well. Yes, Sorensen, Sorensen played a couple more. of games as well, didn't he? It was Colin, Sorensen, Tymon. Um, oh, who else was there? Valinden oh, made yeah, his Edwards as well. Yeah, played for the whole season. Valinden, oh my God. Valinden had that Reading. really good, yeah. positive, really bright debut at uh, Reading. Yeah, I don't think that was his first game for Stoke. It was certainly his first game in the Championship. Like, oh my God, he was unbelievable. I think his first game for Stoke was the Rochdale Cup game. Yeah, I've never seen. Yeah, but I've never seen a player take a corner with his right foot and then it goes out for a corner on the other side and he takes it again with his left foot. He's, he's, just he's very brilliant. He's very good with both feet. Yeah, very two foot. But that's the type of player he is. He's he, he's a very very technical dribbler. He's a very technical dribbler, and you know you need to have good control with both feet. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what we've been missing for. Like Ince is very one-footed, I'd say. Yeah, and I've noticed probably that a lot McLean with to an extent. I've probably noticed that McLean a lot with him to an extent as well. I've noticed that a lot with him. He cuts in and shoots a lot, uh, but I feel like yeah. O'Neill's kind of coached that out of him, which is very good. Because yeah, yes, yes, he still cuts in, but you've also got Smith making an overlapping run. 
and then he just plays. Yeah, and he's Smith can put a good ball in, can't he? Smith can put a good ball in, and you've also got Powell just inside of Smith. Yeah, if you notice that a couple of times, he's, he's sometimes yeah, comes inside that. of Smith, and I like that as well. Um, but moving on, you can sort of argue the same with Klukas, but uh, moving on. Well, go on, go on, make your point. I said you can also argue sort of like the same with Klukas because I see McLean's not really like a crosser. Yeah, ball. Klukas he does it a lot on the other side, doesn't he? Yeah, because McLean drills a crosser rather than actually whip it in. Like Klukas can just put, pull it back and whip it in. Yeah. Um, but moving on. We're going to get into predictions for our for the remaining games if and when they go ahead. Um, Reading okay. away, I've gone for a one-one draw. I was going to go to this match, so I would have liked us to win, uh, but I think we will get. I think we get a draw, so I go one-one as well. We always draw against Reading. It's normally quite a boring yeah. game as well. Um, Middlesbrough at home, I've gone for a two-nil win. I've gone for a two-one win to Stoke. Wigan away, I think we were going to take quite a few numbers to that game. I think we would have taken upwards of 3,000. Um, well, I think we'd have sold their whole away end out. Um, I've gone for a 3-1 win. I've gone for 2-1. I think we would have gone 2-0 up and then we conceded in like the 85th minute and gone out on no. Oh, yeah. Um, Barnsley at home, I've gone for a 3-0 win. I've gone for a 3-1 win, but... Just feel, I just feel like they'll score and then we'll. I just feel like they'll score and then we'll absolutely destroy them. Oh yeah, we've had a couple of games like that this season. Uh, we look at Huddersfield. Yeah. Uh, the only one I've gone. The only one I've gone with that we're losing for is a uh, Forest last day. I think so. Oh, do you think? Do you think we'll get a result at Leeds? I think we'll get a draw at Leeds because I think Leeds have been slipping. I think Leeds were going to. I think because Leeds have been slipping a lot, and I thought we would have yeah. got a draw from that. I've gone for a 2 0 Leeds win, but Leeds are a very, very strong side at Ellen Road. I've gone for a 1 1 draw. I thought Leeds would have gone 1 0 up and get frustrated, and then we'd capitalise. Mm. I think Birmingham would have been a very interesting game. Uh, I've gone for a 2 2 draw. Obviously, they've been, in really, they've been in really good form. I've actually put this down for a 1 0 win in that one. So. Birmingham to win? No, yeah. us to win. Oh, surprisingly. I thought I think the more confidence we get under O'Neill, and I think like the more we can actually start winning and less drawing. Yeah, Bristol City. I've gone for a two-one loss. Uh, I've gone for a one-one draw. I think um, Bristol City are going to push playoffs. Yeah, I think so as well. I think they've done all right. Brentford at home, last home game of the season. I've gone for a two-nil loss. Very good side. I've gone for surprising. I was going to put a draw for that one. I've actually changed my mind. I think I'm going to go for a one 0 to Reading. No, no, not right. uh, Brentford. And then Forest away, last game of the season, uh, going out with a one-one draw. No, unfortunately, we're going to go out with a two-nil loss. Forest a really strong side, and they could get promoted. It uh, could get automatics if uh, Leeds or West Brom slip. Yeah, I think uh, the only reason I've done that is I think we would have been too complacent, sort of thing. So um, we were. I think we would have been safe. Um, from the drop, and we just thought, okay, well, let's just coast this out for the I think, rest of the season. I think Forest. I don't think we would have done up. that. But, I think Forest will go for yeah. up through the playoffs. You think? I thought that maybe Brentford would have done. No, it, I think Forest will go. Right. Forest will go up through the playoffs. I think it might be Forest Brentford in the final, depending on how it. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a good final. Um, right, we're going to hand out a few awards now. Awards. Awards, they're not awards. We're not giving certificates, trophies, or anything. Um, what's your goal of the season? My goal of the season, uh, there's been quite a few good ones. Ince's was good against Charlton, Charlton yeah. Um, who else is there? Uh, mine's probably going to go to Klukas uh, for his halfway line. Klukas is halfway line, um, Barnsley. Barnsley. I'm going to go for his uh, second goal at Barnsley. His, um, Absolute thunderbolt of a strike from the edge of the box. Absolute screaming. It's not often a player scores the first and second best goal of the month in the same match, though, is it? No, he was really good that game. I think that's his best, been his best game for Stoke, and I think he could have gone on and got a hat-trick had he have not come off with that injury. Yeah, I think so as well. What's been your game of the season? Hold on, I think my camera's going to turn off any second, so I'll just start and stop it again, hold on. Yeah, well, we're we're gonna wrap up anyway in a minute. So, okay, yeah, cool. Let's go again. 
So, um, what what would your well, game of the season be? My, my game of the season would have to be the Sheffield Wednesday, Wednesday one, because uh, uh, of the way we did it. For me, it would be the Sheffield Wednesday or Barnsley. Yeah, yeah I think the Sheffield them Wednesday one get it good. for me. I'd, I'd probably give it to mm. Barnsley, though. I'm going to give it to the Wednesday one. Uh, Wednesday, was really good home, for, yeah. Wednesday was really good for just the end of the game. and um, There's a lot of people in terms of like, on me. Because Barnsley was good in terms of like a Stoke perspective. In terms of like a football perspective, I think the Wednesday one's a lot better. Yeah. Not often you score like two goals in the last minute. In terms of a Stoke performance, that's probably the, the, the oh, best no, performance. No, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going for Sheffield Wednesday. Oh, right, Sheffield Wednesday. And finally, Sheffield Wednesday. the last award we're going to dish out... Player of the season. Player of the season. Mine, I had a few in mind for this one. I was going to go, the three I had in mind was going to be Campbell, Burke, Lucas, and, wait, who's the other one? Um, oh no, I forgot the other one now. Uh, who was it? Mine would be McLean. McLean, that was it. Yeah, but, um, they'd, be my, they'd be my three nominees, but um, for an actual player of the season, I'd give it to Lucas. He's been good all the way through the season. I know Campbell's done well this year. Um, yeah. since O'Neill's took over but if you're talking about someone who's done well under think... Jones if you're talking about someone who's done well under Jones and O'Neill I'd have to give it to that Lucas, Lucas yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think if McLean had been, been playing out wide for Nathan Jones or like earlier he would have got the player of the season award but Jones but Lucas had perhaps and same with Campbell even if Campbell had been playing earlier then he probably would have um, got yeah. it but I'd give it to Lucas yeah I have to agree there um, but yeah, that's that's just about all we've got time for. Uh, hopefully everyone has enjoyed this. Um, if you've got any topics that you want um, to talk, want um, discussing, uh, leave them in the comments. Um, also follow us both on social media. They will be both in the description. Um, Elliot, thank you very much for coming on uh, and taking the time. Hi, time, mate. Taking the time yeah, to come on it. and just talk about the season. I know it's not been the best season, um, but since O'Neill's come in, I think we can properly say um i think we can say we are looking up we're back we're looking up yeah um i think next season could be a bright season if we start off well um but i'm not going to get too ahead of myself um but yeah hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, live show kind of thing i still need a name for it so again suggestions for a name will be appreciated in the comments um but yeah hope you guys have enjoyed make sure you all stay safe Stay well. I'll see you guys in the next one. Elliot, you're going to do the honours? Um, goodbye. Oh, I wanted to go on Stoke. Um, <laughs> all right, sorry. Go on, Stoke. Go on, Stoke.